Hey guys, welcome to this new video. In this video, we're going to combine some of my recent videos. In specific, those are my per room temperature and humidity measurement project, and my recent video about using super cheap relay boards. We're going to combine those two components and add some automation using Node-RED into the mix. With this, we're going to make the bathroom ventilation automatically go into high mode when someone is taking a shower, and once the room's humidity has returned to normal levels, to automatically set the ventilation to normal levels again. So let's first talk about the hardware and software components we're going to use for this project. I'll show them on the screen, on the hardware, but they can also be found in the video description, and I will provide affiliated links and a blog post which you can look up and see all the details, including the code, etc. Software wise, first off, we're going to use Home Assistant. Well, duh. And best is if you're also already familiar with ESP Home. If you've watched my multi room temperature and humidity measuring video and or my super cheap relay video, you probably have all of this set up and running already. Software wise, you're only going to need to add Node Red to that setup. And if you're running HassIO, Frank, and I'll leave a link to his channel in the description, has written some great modules for that and it installs as easy as a few clicks of a button. For the hardware components in this project, we're going to use one or more ESP32 modules. Kind of depends on your house and the layout and where everything is situated. Then we're going to use one of the Xiaomi temperature and humidity sensors. I'm going to be using a four channel relay board. A one channel would have been enough, but and they're so cheap, I own the lowest count channels I have is a four, so yeah. And then we're going to need a power supply, but basically anything five volt will do, like a phone charger, something like that. And well, we're going to use some DuPont cables and some simple wire. If you followed my previous videos, you probably already have or are familiar with most of these components already. So the first location we're going to start at is the central house ventilation box. In my case, this is located in the garage, but it's a single ventilation box that ventilates the whole house. Now, this very much depends on your house and your bathroom and fan use there. And if you have a whole house system like I have, or you have a separate ventilation unit for the bathroom. In my case, the central ventilation box actually has bathroom terminals. And if you close those together, so basically link them with a wire, the unit automatically goes to its highest setting. Once this cross is removed, the unit returns to its normal programming again. If your bathroom uses a dedicated fan and not a whole house system like I have here, you will need to connect the relay over there. So let's take a look at that. I already have it hooked up because I've been running this for the past week. And since I had a 24 volt power supply close by for my LED lighting, I used a small DC-DC converter to make five volt for the ESP32 module and the relay board. The ESP32 and DC-DC converter are plugged into a small breadboard just to get this set up quickly. From the ESP32 to the relay board, I've run only a single GPIO wire. Ground, which needs to be shared between the relay board and the ESP32, was already connected since it uses the same power supply. As I mentioned, if you don't have a power supply nearby, you can just buy a few dollar phone charger and that will provide plenty of 5 volt in most situations. Last thing to complete this setup at this point is wiring the terminals on the ventilation box into the relay as you can see here. Now, when we trigger the relay on and off in Home Assistant, the ventilation box switches between normal and high mode. It stays in high mode as long as the relay is on. The software configuration part for this ESP32 is literally the config I used in my super cheap relay video. If you want more information about this part, check out that video. I'll have it linked in the description. So in my case, I need to set up a second ESP32, which is closer to the bathroom to receive the temperature and humidity information from the Xiaomi sensor. But since this uses 2.4 gigahertz, basically Bluetooth, range is pretty good. And I've mounted the sensor in our attic, which is close enough to the shower to receive the signal. I'm not sure yet about the final location, but since the sensor is wireless, I can move it around and test different spots. That also means I can mount it pretty close to the shower, and even if it would short out, 
Eh, it's only a $10 sensor and it runs on batteries, so it's not dangerous. Again, if you'd like more information about these sensors and how this setup works, including configuration code, etc., watch my video about these Xiaomi sensors and ESP32s. Link in the description. As always. <laughs> so, now we have the relay we need and the humidity information available within a Home Assistant. Great, but now what to do with it? To automate this, you can either use built-in Home Assistant automations or use Node-RED. I've chosen to use Node-RED since it provides a nice graphical interface and once you get to know it, it's pretty easy to use. Starting out with Node-RED can seem a bit daunting, but don't worry, we're going to build this flow together and I think basically anyone should be able to do it. So, I'm going to assume Node-RED is a fresh install and you want to follow along creating this project we're doing right now. The first step we need to do is add a few palettes to Node-RED. This basically teaches it new things it can do and makes it smarter, so, well, it knows how to contact Home Assistant, for instance. The palettes we need in this video, beyond the standard ones, is just the Home Assistant WebSocket palette, and you'll see here on the screen how I install it. Okay, once that's installed, we are ready to create our first flow. To start off, we drag in a state node from the Home Assistant palette and we need to configure it since it's the first time. This first time you'll need to do some configuration to basically tell it where it can find Home Assistant. Now if you're running HassIO, this is super easy and just is a little tick in the box that you're running HassIO. Otherwise, if you're running vanilla Home Assistant or a separate node red, you basically have to enter the URL to your Home Assistant and the API key as you can see here. Once this is configured, selecting the right device from Home Assistant in Node-RED becomes as simple as starting to type the name of the sensor or switch you want to use, and it will automatically show you the choices you have. In our case, we're going to use Sensor 4 Humidity, since that's the one I mounted in the bathroom. Okay. Now we have our humidity information available, but we need to, to switch the relay above a certain value. For that, we're going to use the function palette and use a switch node. In the switch node, we define the value at which the ventilation should turn on, and the second value is when it should turn off again. I'm still tweaking these values to make everything run exactly as I want it and for the duration that I want it, but it's very easy to change these values, so that makes it very flexible. So now, we just need to link actions to these switch values. For that, we're going to use two instances of a service node. These are again part of the Home Assistant palette, so drag one into your node red flow and attach it to the top link of the switch. Then, in the service node, you want to select the switch or the relay that we just installed. In my case, that's Relay Air Cycle 1. Hit done and copy that node and change that one to say turn off and attach it to the lower point. Okay, that's all the programming we need to do. So let's see if that works. So. Here we are in the bathroom and here I am turning on the shower and it takes a little bit before we get hot water but once we do, you see that the humidity quickly rises. And once it reaches our set point, let's see what happens in the garage. That's great, and seems to work perfectly. As I said, I've had this active for about a week now, and except for fiddling a little bit with the values in the switch node, this has been working fine. It's a bit harder to show on video for when it turns off, because the ventilation box keeps running for 5 minutes, but from what I've been able to see, it all works perfectly, and in Home Assistant you can actually see the time it was on and off per day. And well, 
that's it really again very easy and i believe this is a great example of how you can use cheap demotica connected components to work for you and raise your comfort level in your home and i can tell you the wife acceptancy factor of this particular project is pretty high so if you like this practical example let me know by giving it a thumbs up and maybe leaving a comment I'm going to make a few more example videos like this, showing situations where I think Demotica can be applied to achieve various goals, such as raising comfort level, like in this video, or saving money, or even improving safety. If you'd like to see those, make sure to stay subscribed, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.